was. Yeah, it's Jack Larimer. You, you probably didn't recognize it because you're maybe you're used to hearing it while you're eating brunch. Yeah. Wow, brunch. That's a pre-COVID word right there. 941, let's go into the K-Way of News, a Zoom room where he wrote the book on procurement and we kind of wanted to bring him uh, on to maybe dust off our conversation that we had way back during containing COVID um, about the Emergency Health of the Superpowers Act. And I remember, uh, John, you had come on uh, to talk about the procurement or the emergency purchasing, uh, man. It's been a while. It's been a minute, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten, but I forget most things these days. Well, you're not the only one. There's a lot to remember nowadays. Uh, but you shot us an email about this, uh, and I guess we'll just kind of start there, the suspension of the uh, AAA process, right? Uh, yeah. There are a number of things that have popped up since we last spoke. Um, but um, well, can I, Let me just tell you a little story talking. real quick, John, about this AAA process. I remember it was just weird because when they had the hearing, um, we had Senator Will Castro was on, and he was talking about how <laughs> he said something to the senators about, "Hey," and they're like, "It's not even our hearing. We're not, we're just here <laughs> as spectators." So I thought that was pretty interesting in itself, right? And so now um, that process has been suspended. We just had Janella uh, Carrera, public health on uh, the show. I don't know if you saw, but it, it's like they're moving full steam ahead with these uh, fines and the fine schedule. And I mean, we could be a couple weeks away from. Um, uh, facing fines for violating these uh, public health orders put forth in an executive order from Adeloupe. So it's just uh, a lot of stuff going on with transparency and the suspension of all that. But let's just start with the AAA process. Uh, do you believe they had the authority to do what they're doing now? Okay. Um, we have to kind of break things down a bit. Please. The, the superpower is... Uh, is a superpower like you find in the comic books. Everybody has their invincibility, no matter what your superpower is. And this this is the same way. Uh, the super superpower, uh, well, first of all, it doesn't call itself that. Uh, it's, it's nothing more, the governor has no power other than to suspend a law or a regulation. Uh, and those are pretty limited also. Uh, so the, this gives the governor no power to make a law. Regulations, yeah, yeah, because the got the executive branch is in charge of making regulations, but not making laws. Uh, and there was some talk about uh, suspending the AAA. Well, you can't do that because that's a law. The AAA is a law about how the government, the executive branch of the government, is meant to promulgate regulations. Once those regulations are properly promulgated uh, in accordance with the law, then the executive branch can do what they want to with them. But again, within the confines of the making uh, and retiring of regulations, the public notice and that sort of thing. Uh, now. I'm not sure the various, I, I haven't really kept up with the executive orders. Um, I'm not sure what is the basis of the authority for all these fines and such as that. But if it's a new regulation, uh, then that has to be done according to the AAA. Uh, so I, I don't really know how to, uh, to apply it to the particular facts that we're talking about. I'm just interested in the structure and architecture and re reading of the law. And uh, it very clearly says that it, uh, it applies to a regulatory statute, can suspend a regulatory statute prescribing procedures for conducting local business. That's the only statute that, that uh, can be uh, suspended is one that talks about conducting local business. Well, the Administration Act, the AAA Act doesn't do that. It talks about conducting government business. You can also suspend regulations of any government agency, but only to the extent that strict compliance with that would prevent, hinder, or delay necessary action by the public health authority to respond to a health emergency. So uh, again, this is not a broad 
broad brush. It's a very carefully uh, drawn uh, um, art piece of art. Right. It, you know, you talk about the, uh, the art. Sounds like a sounds like a very a very meticulous color by number. It, it, it is a very meticulous color by number. Right. Yep, you got to stay in the lines with the colors you're given. Uh, John, but whose job is it to do what you're doing right now? To look at these things and say, hey, you don't have that power to do that. Whose job in well, this government is that? Yeah, it's the Attorney General's uh, primary responsibility. Right. The Attorney General there is meant to protect the people's laws, not to protect the people who are proclaiming them against the law. Secondly, it would be the legal counsel for the governor. Thirdly, it would be for individuals, or would not be for them, but it would be well within the rights of individuals who are adversely affected by these to take it to court and have it tested, have that power, the overreach. I'm not even saying that there is an overreach. To the extent that there is an overreach, it's, <laughs> it's got to be tested. Uh, and, the, and the courts can rule on that. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you say the Attorney General's office, but, you know, during the, um, gosh, I want to say it was an oversight hearing. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. the AG mm -hmm. uh, pleading attorney-client privilege and couldn't talk about these emergency purchases and the procurement for the first round of uh, quarantine hotels. Uh, so I, I'm not even sure the AG would chime in on this Definitely particular not. issue. I, I will eat my own foot if the AG came out and said, oh, no, Governor, you don't have that authority. I would caligwin my own toes and eat them. I mean, it, would the legislature, could they petition the AG for an opinion? Um, but even then, I'm not even sure um, where well, the, the AG Well, the AG stand. has... Um, an obligation to a client um, when that when that interest is being tested, but the AG has a first and higher duty to the people uh, to enforce the laws. And and if the AG cannot tell the governor, I'm sorry, this is beyond your realm. Uh, let's find another way to do it. They could do that uh, because there's there's typically more than one way to skin a cat. There mm. might be a way to do it. Right. Um, but who knows, maybe the, the AG, maybe the governor ran this by the AG and the AG was like, yeah, yeah, you could go. You, yeah. can, you can bypass AAA, <laughs> it's cool. Well, that, that's just the first step. And we, we've seen uh, not just in Guam over the years, but around the world that AGs don't always fight their bosses, their political bosses, right. uh, you know? And uh, I mean, look at William Barr. Uh, it's, uh, they have, they're human and, uh, they, they get bound by their own interests, uh, right, like right. the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do, but it's the thing we have to be cognizant of. So uh, the, the emergency powers act gives the governor the authority to suspend rules and regulations, but not laws has a very limited law prescription. And, and again, that's a, uh, uh, let me, I just I want to make sure that I get the right language precisely because you have to be that. Right. Or any regulatory statute prescribing procedures for conducting local business. So if it's a local law uh, prescribing procedures for conducting local business, and that would also be what you what you can do, what you should do, and also what you can't do. But what is what is it, and what we're talking about here, that it has anything to do with prescribing the procedures for doing a local business? Uh, so I, I don't think that any statutory authority of much practical impact uh, from uh, comes out of that particular clause. Uh, and then the, the rules and regulations, they also have a limitation. She can only uh, suspend. She doesn't give her power to write it. It doesn't give her the power to write law. This is a suspension power. It never isn't used in here, create. It says suspend. 
So to suspend a, an agency's regulations to the extent that shrimp compliance gets in the way of addressing the public health needs. So um, these are not broad, it's not a creation of any power right. and the restrictions, uh, the, the power except the suspension and that power is a negative power that is also strictly construed. Right. Now, John, I know I know this isn't uh, proprietary knowledge. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure if you can go in and read the law, then, you know, 15 other senators can do the same. Uh, you know, a whole cast of characters from throughout, not just the government, the private sector. Why haven't we seen, um, well, we know why we're not going to see the AG uh, come out, because it just doesn't do that um, with this administration. But uh, why haven't we seen any senators kind of stand and be like, hey, what are you doing here? Or do you think that the the... the train of thought is that we kind of all need to rally behind this to get it done because of this pandemic and you know never mind what the law says you can or can't do this is what's needed yeah it it, it may be that but you know there's so many laws out there that um <laughs> prescribe penalties on the people who violate them and that can be uh, a it won't be a senator because uh they only have an obligation to write a good law they don't really have they, ha they can hold an oversight committee, but they can't make the governor behave mm. uh, if the governor is misbehaving. Uh, so, you know, you depend on the, the uh, goodwill of the people in, in government, the governor, the AG, the senators, uh, and even, you know, we've passed uh, very recently and the governor, signed, governor has signed it, a, a revision to the uh, procurement law, uh, emergency procurement. Right. And in that, it says it, it, it's, it's increased some of the flexibility of the government in acquiring things in an emergency. And it says, you, you know, basically you can do s simple things in good faith. And good faith means honesty. It means having no conflicts. It's, it's, a, it's the duty of a trustee. We, we should all be familiar with that in one way or another. Uh, and so uh, we have to, it, it, it becomes impracticable because if you're, if you're taking the case to court and you have an attorney general says, I can't give you any evidence because that's all, every evidence of what you're talking about is all covered by our, our uh, in, uh, immunities, <laughs> our confidences, you don't get anywhere. Right. But, uh, you know, the, the court gets to judge that as well. Uh, and, but it's an expensive process. Mm -hmm. And by the time you've gotten to the end of it, you know, well, I'm not sure this pandem pandemic, but most emergencies have passed. Right, right. Uh, so it's, it becomes very practical in how you do this. Uh, you can do it in a couple of ways. You can do it at the um, ballot box, as we've just seen. Right. Or you can do it, um, by raising funds and, and, and taking the matter to court. I'm just an observer. I know. Uh, you know, I'm not going to take a, a, a leading role in any of this, but when I see stupidity being talked about, I, I want to just want to lend a, a, not entirely disinterested, but at least a, a uh, objective look at it. That's why you're on this show, John. That's why we had to get you back in here because your email was just too. I mean, I felt like I was reading Supreme Court brief. <laughs> well, it, any any lawyer I know could look at that and come to that conclusion without any coaching. Right, right. You know, um, so it's it's not that unclear. I got to tell you, well, the first two or three times I read it, I had to reread it. And I had to sleep on it and I had to reread it again. Then I had to sleep on it one more time, and then it was clear as day. Uh, because it, it, it's a, basically one long run-on sentence. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, the verbs and the objects and the nouns. Uh, Herewith, thereunto, yeah. thereunto <laughs> notwithstanding, here within. Yeah. It kind of sounds like you read it and you're like, yeah, this is what this says, but it can't be that simple. Let me sleep on it uh, a, a bunch of times. Yes, yeah. yes. And I just don't understand, like, if you get it and it's that simple and you teach classes on it, then I'm not sure where everyone else is at on this. Other other than to maybe that, oh, this is what the governor needs to do. We need to find people or whatever because, you know, people are sick. People are getting COVID. They're dying. And people aren't listening. And people aren't listening. 
Yeah. Well, you know, people say that uh, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. My, my wife has a better explanation than that. She says, I'll see it when I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, no. <laughs> that's what reading the law is all about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, uh, John, so is this going to become a, a class at GCC next year or what? Uh, well, to the extent that it deals with procurement, right. uh, it would be an, an element in um, uh, uh, Module 2, which deals with methods of procurement. Oh, there you go. But, I, um, you know, they, they would love to be teaching those classes now, um, but not in person. And right. uh, I'm kind of old school, like really <laughs> yeah you're like number two pencil old school old, you know i yeah. it took me forever just to get on the zoom thing yeah mm -hmm. hey you're welcome I... well there's a new uh <laughs> batch of elected leaders right so you're gonna have to be holding a procurement or don't do they go through procurement classes uh, the the there is a, a law uh that requires everybody who has uh, anything to do with procurement in their mm. in their procurement job I mean, in, yeah, in their government job uh, as a buyer, a clerk, or whatever, uh, a director, uh, to take the procurement training classes. There's a basic procurement tr uh, program out there. It is not limited to government people. And when I first started out, there were about half private sector people taking it. Uh, but I don't see them anymore. Uh, it's, uh, well, first of all, they have to pay the uh, GCC to take the class. Right. Uh, I do it for free. But they have to pay GCC to take the class, and so uh, when you're in working for the government and the law makes you do it, the government pays for it. So it's a lot easier to get yeah. a classroom full of students that right. way. Well, John, uh, we always appreciate your uh, insight. You know, feel free to shoot us another email, and we'll get you uh, back on the show there. Just don't call it a superpower anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I told you, Sabrina. You, Sabrina uses that term very sarcastically, dripping. The sarcasm when she's like, All the right. governor so used her superpowers. Sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Thank All you, right. John. Thank you, guys. Yeah, be safe. Be safe, okay? All right, you too. Okay, there you go. Attorney John, um, John Thomas uh, Brown. Yeah, you know, always, I would like always a good talk with that guy. Yes. I would like to take that class, honestly. We just did, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, the the, mater the material like intrigues me to some degree and everything, even though that's not that's not what I do. But I think just to actually have John as an instructor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. seeing as how passionate he is about, I think the entertainment value will be off the charts. Right on. Well, be we, a fun class. Maybe you could be our proxy, uh, John. What do you think? Can you get Jason in there? Um, maybe a well, waiver. I think um, you know it would be very very good for. Uh, industries like yours where you are parsing things and uh, expressing uh, viewpoints uh, mm -hmm. to have some understanding of them, not just this. Uh, but one of the things I try to make in this class is, is the um, how, to, how to read like a lawyer, uh, how to look at it. So it, it is beyond just procurement, but it involves an awful lot of uh, theory and philosophy of, of uh, the way law is meant to work, in this case, in the uh, uh, in, in the procurement realm. Uh, so I think it would be good for you. Um, we aren't holding any classes, or at least I'm not holding any classes. I've given them a lot of names for people who are uh, more game than I am to try to do it online. I, I just think it, when I try to teach, I, I got to look in your face, see if there's a question in your face, see if there's any understanding in your eyes. Otherwise, and I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. You know, right. It, yeah. I, I can't do that on this stuff. You, you're not a fan of distance learning, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I taught out at um, what was it, Phoenix a few years back, uh, out at the base, because my dad was in the Air Force. He got a degree from online somewhere, and he was as proud as punch of it. And I was just, I feel like I owed him one. So I was teaching out there. And they're, they, the subject matter is determined by them, and they test that subject matter. And so much of the subject matter was completely irrelevant, in my view, to the course level. Mm -hmm. So I, I got a bad taste for it back then, and I uh, finished that class my, and never never did it again. Uh, so I I am old school when it comes to that. I really think that it's the, it's the personal relation. I'm I'm prepared to give lectures, and if anybody wants to put you know a venue together for it, but right. Um, 
Yeah, that's another story. We can't do that either, can we? But, uh, well, yeah. we feel, feel free to come on and lecture us anytime, John. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll see you. Bye for real now. Okay, dokie. Take okay, care. see you. Attorney John Thomas Brown, uh, 10 a.m. Well, Jay, looks like you're taking a procurement class. No, I'm, I'm psyched, man. Sign me up. Good job today. To go. Is it a one and done type class, or is that like uh, for several weeks? Well, type class? I, I guess maybe even if it is like a one and done, it's like one of those things you would have to like go over and over to make sure like it mm -hmm. sticks, like John was just saying, because you know, I mean that's that's a pretty heavy material. He, he said, "What did he say when he looks out of the? He wants to see um, some level of understanding." Make, making your sure eyes. that you get it. He didn't mention blank stare, which is what <laughs> I would be doing. Just like, can you go back?